Hey, what is up, internet friends? Carter here. Have another video for you. This is my mini LPC made by Sniper Blade Works. Let's take a look at some of the specs on this, shall we? Uh, it's about a 3.5 inch 1095 high carbon steel blade. Overall length is just under 8 inches. G10 titanium frame lock, G10 backspacer, uh, almost fully enclosed, not quite. One single thumb stud here. Um, and as I mentioned, this is made by Sniper Blade Works, so this is a custom. Uh, Sniper Blade Works consists of four different people, uh, one being Jody Mueller, I believe is how you pronounce his name, Lance Abernathy, those are the two main guys. Uh, and then I guess there's Sam Jones and Andrew Marr that do work as well on their knives. Mainly though, Sniper Blade Works is a collaboration between Jody Mueller and Lance Abernathy. And in fact, LPC stands for Lance's Personal Carry. That's what that stands for. So this is kind of a knife he designed that he wanted to carry around. Now this is a mini. It also comes in a large. However, this definitely is not really a mini. Uh, I think for a while they're, they're actually calling it the mid LPC, uh, meaning that you know there may be a true mini in the works, but officially it's listed as mini LPC. The uh, full-size LPC is not that much bigger, but it is larger. Uh, being a custom, this comes in all kinds of different configurations. This is your base configuration. This is kind of the introductory configuration. Nothing fancy here. No carbon fiber, no bolster, no crazy finishes, um, you know, just single thumb stud, no crazy designs, anything like that. This is kind of a just a standard standard version. Now when this was designed, it was designed mainly as a fighting defensive type blade. And you'll see that in the way you handle it. When you grip it, you're actually kind of, it's kind of like a pistol grip. And it was made that way for a lot of snap cuts, you know, where you can kind of whip the front down like this as well as thrusting. You can also choke up on it with that choil there. And I'm a big fan of the choil. Not only do I like the ability to choke up on it, but it does add an additional safety feature. If the lock were to fail, you do have, you know, the potential of not slicing your fingers off because of that. So I'm always a big fan of the choil, so I'm glad it's on here. Uh, the design overall, it's very ergonomic, as you can see. Uh, pretty much different in every respect from the design of, say, a strider with a lot of um, straight lines and angles and things like that. Strider is very symmetrical, whereas uh, this is very organic, a lot of curves, everything's curved, and even spots that don't necessarily need to be, everything's curved. It has a couple of uh, design elements here, nothing too crazy, some grooves cut in here, it's got a thumb ramp so you can access the uh, thumb stud, and as soon as it focuses we'll take a look at that here. Um, this retails for about five, five fifty. Of course, all depending on if you're getting it secondhand from a retailer, directly from the manufacturer, or f used from somebody else. The thumb stud you can see here is their six shooter design. So it actually looks like the cylinder on a revolver. It's got uh, six holes around it and then a center hole there. G10 is mildly grippy. It's not super grippy, but it's not really that important with the choil and the ergonomics. Um, you know, holding it this way is fairly comfortable, not super comfortable. This this does provide a little bit of a hot spot right there. Uh, but right here, man, this is I mean, this just melts right in your hand. And with the way this is angled, I mean, it would be perfect for thrusting because you have force coming back right into your palm instead of slipping down through that way. You can see there. Sniper Blade Works logo right there. It's kind of, I guess, just lightly laser etched. It's their modified Grateful Dead with the uh, crosshairs in the middle. You can actually see it better in the shadow. Sniper Blade Works. And most notably on the 1095 Hari Carbon Steel Blade, it is differentially treat heat treated. So you do have a Hamon right here, which is just awesome. That's really kind of one of their trademarks and their designs is their use of that. Basically what differentially heat treated means, they, they apply kind of a clay up here to this portion. So when they heat treat it, 
this portion doesn't heat treat as hard as this portion. Uh, so it makes the edge really hard, retain an edge very well, but keeps everything else a little more flexible so it can handle uh, shock and flex, you know, and it's not going to snap. Because with steel, if you, you know, harder is not necessarily better. You get it too hard and it's going to shatter, it's going to be brittle. You get it too soft, then it won't hold an edge. So this is a means to get both of the highest qualities in one blade. You got a nice groove cut in here. Um, not quite a blood groove, it doesn't go all the way down, but it's got a kind of a texture in there and it looks like they've kept the heat treat scale on that and didn't clean that out, which looks pretty cool. The titanium, just standard bead blast. This doesn't feature any sort of official hinder lock stabilizer. Um, you know, the pocket clip does somewhat act as one but it's not quite as you know efficient as a true lock stabilizer uh, love that lockup it's just out of the box perfect spot perfect angle on the tang I mean this thing is gonna lock up fine forever no stick at all I do not believe it's carbonized um, but it has never never stuck and I think it just has to do with that superb mating of the lock bar and the tang uh, just creates no issues with uh, stick at all. Other than that, I mean, this is a this is a utilitarian, meant to be carried knife. You know, this isn't a pretty spectacle type piece. Uh, it's a well-made, comfortable, useful blade that should go in your pocket and be carried around, which I would do, but I'm carrying my Strider instead.